it just makes me feel so good inside knowing that, you know, I gave that person an extra day to live, you know, because when you're in addiction, you could die any day, any second. I mean, I guess it sounds kind of weird because anyone can die any day, any second. But the chances of you, you know, surviving in addiction, it's, it's very low. It's, I don't know, it's just a great feeling. It makes me feel great inside. I, I can't even explain how. I really can't. I just know that I helped that person and that's it. I just feel great. And for you to get more of that feeling, it's just, it's just helping more people. Just keep helping more people, yeah. This is crazy, because I feel like that I followed you on TikTok since like COVID, honestly. Yeah. Were you making videos then? Yeah, I started, um, I'd say right before COVID. Okay, so let's yeah. say, the, you know, three and a half years I've been following you. That's crazy. It's crazy that you're finally here and to see your growth. Yeah. But, um, Vic, thanks for hopping on. Of course. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Um, you just want to, like, just to, before we get into it, you just want to tell everybody kind of who you are, what you do, and what you've been up to lately? Yeah, of course. Um, so I'm Victor, the good boss is what they call me, and I started out by just taking care of my employees. And um, then it led to me finding homeless people on the side of the road and offering them a job. And one of them took me up my offer, which really just turned the table on everything that I was doing. So um, I help homeless people, help people in addiction, and just I'm a good boss. That's kind of like, you know, in a nutshell. <laughs> okay. How did you uh, put yourself in the position to become a boss and, and have your own business and kind of bring it back to the beginning there? Um, so I guess if you want to go way back to the beginning, I dropped out of high school and I worked for a couple companies and I just said, I can't do this. I'd rather be my own boss, make my own schedule. Um, cause I've worked for some shitty bosses. So I think that's kind of how I wanted to, to do the whole good boss thing. Um, so I dropped out of high school and I had to make money, worked for some companies and then I said, screw it. I want to start my own business because I worked for a landscaping company. And uh, that's kind of what pushed me to, to start a landscaping company. And um, I just, I love being my own boss. It's great. When did you start um, your landscaping company? How old were you? So I started my first company, I would say it was 2009. I'm bad with math. So I'm 34 right now. Uh, so I don't know, I was probably 17 maybe okay. when I, I bought a crappy truck and just started going out there. I made a business card and got my first account when I was making the business card, when I was picking them up. That's how I got my first account. Yeah. What, uh, were you just kind of doing lawns to start off like yeah. everybody does and then just a little, little route and then how'd that grow? Um, so it just honestly, word of mouth was the way it grew. That is, it's the best way to advertise, you know, best way to get work so that's exactly how it grew i did some advertising um service magic it's like a home advisor i did that and it just naturally grew i i like to take care of my customers do a good job um you know your work is going to sell itself so if you're good at what you do and you own your own business just keep going with it where did you learn like to have that you know vision or that that way of of business uh was it you know i learned over just from from doing it or i mean i would say i just learned on my own uh -huh. just kind of just won it you know and as you continue to to work for to have clients and stuff and and you realize you know if i do a good job this person treats me better or is that just kind of how, how it went or uh was there a specific like moment that you were it was like a light bulb moment working for yourself with your own business that um you realized you had to do it the right way um, I don't know. I mean, the biggest thing was just making my own hours and making my own money. You know, I didn't want to make $12 an hour. You know, I wanted to make whatever I wanted to make. So I think that was like the, the biggest thing for me. Uh, and just not having someone tell me what to do. Did so. you? Did, sorry, did you ever yeah, have you like a particularly like rough experience with your boss? They kind of left a negative taste in your mouth. They kind of said, "Hey, I'm gonna be my own boss forever," or I think it was just him not treating me well, just not showing that 
that he cared about me. You know, without me, how is he going to make money? So he could go get another employee, but just not showing that he actually cared about having me on the team is kind of like what made me want to do my own thing. And then how long, like after you started doing your own thing, was it time to hire an employee and bring somebody else on? I'd say the first year I worked by myself. Um, when I got big jobs here and there, I just brought someone on, you know, just for the day or for the week or whatever. Then the following year is when I took someone on full time. And what was that process like? I mean, it's a big step to kind of, you know, put somebody's livelihood in your hands. Mm -hmm. You know, your business needs to succeed or that person's going to be hungry and not have a roof over their head. That's what's right. that? What's that responsibility like? Well, the biggest thing is that I, I worked beside him. Um, I didn't just say, here, go do this. You know, I worked with him, showed him that I cared. You know, I didn't, I didn't just drop him off at a job site. Um, I think that that is the the biggest thing with your employees. You know, working alongside them, showing them that you can do it too. Like so you think it's important when you're there to kind of like hands in the dirt, like you know, work Definitely. working as well instead of just driving around in the shiny truck, shiny yeah. truck making yeah. sure they're okay. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, now that I'm a bigger business, you know, I do drive around a lot. But I do treat my employees well, you know, I, I take care of them, I show them that I appreciate them. I guess appreciation is the, the word I was looking for earlier. Um, but yeah, it, it, it gets tough, you know, when you grow, the bigger you grow, it's like you can't be there every day with them. But if you have a good foreman, a good, you know, uh, manager or whatever that can be there with them, that also helps too. What has been the reaction, you know, as you've hired more and more? grown your business uh, from the employees to, to you as a boss? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, have, do people like working for you? Yeah, they do. Um, I have, you know, went through guys. Some guys just think it's all fun and games, you know, maybe because maybe it's my fault. Maybe I just treat them too well. So some people take advantage of me and uh, some of them are gone. Some of them have moved on. Um, a young a younger kid at the time who worked for me, he told me in the beginning, he said, I want to start my own business. You know, how can I do it? And he worked at Dunkin' Donuts. I call him Johnny Dunks. So if you see this, Johnny Dunks, this is about you. Um, so he basically said to me, he's like, I want to start my own business. Can you show me how to do it? He was a young kid. And I told him, I said, why don't you come work for me? So I hired him. He started working like one, maybe two days a week. Uh, and then he turned out to be full time. He left Dunkin' Donuts and he worked for me for about five years. And now he's got his own company. He's, he's successful. He's doing really well. So, uh, you know, I, I guess I taught him the tools and he wanted to do it. So if you want to do something, you can definitely do it. Yeah. What do you think? Like, how do you think that his um, approach to business is different from yours now? Because you kind of started your own business, like, I don't know if the word spite, but you said, yeah. you know, you were, un like, you know, underpaid and underappreciated. Yeah. But, you know, you showed this kid a tremendous amount of good faith by bringing him on and, you know, giving him all your all your free juice, you know, letting, yeah. letting him know how to start a business. Do you think that his approach will be any different than yours? Or do you think that Definitely. he's going to try to mimic your success? Well, I think he, he learned a lot from me because um, he's been in business now, I think, two, maybe three years. And he treats his employees well. He's, he's a good boss, too. So I think I'd like to say that I've rubbed off on him, um, which is a great thing. And I think he learned from some of my mistakes, you know, being in business. Because obviously I've had some issues, um, you know, like a customer not paying me. So I, I think he's definitely learned from what what has happened with with my company when he worked for me so talk about obviously people know you from social media and picking up people off the street to be yep. your employees how did that come about the first time and how have you grown that into what it is now um so i'm just driving from job to job every day i i am in the truck a lot so uh, what what year like time period is this this was um I would like to say three years ago, maybe three years ago was 
the first person that I approached, I think the first person was in Walmart in Tewksbury. His name was Adam. And he was on the corner, he was stressed out, you know, addicted to drugs. He needed his fix. So I approached him and I just simply said, you know, hey man, do you want a job? And I think his response was, yes. But it took me a few times to go back and see him. Like he really didn't grab onto it. Because, you know, when you're on the street, someone comes up to you and says, do you want a job? I mean, do you really believe them? I mean, I've heard that a lot from people that I've asked. Like, oh, it's not real. It's not true. So I think it was hard for him to believe it. Um, eventually, we, we kind of lost touch. Uh, he went up north or whatever. Ended up getting clean. I found out this years ago, you know, probably five months ago. Um, when I found out, because at the time it was, whatever, three years ago. And uh, it turns out he's doing really well. And he was grateful for me reaching out. Me reaching out to him kind of gave him the, the hope to go and get clean. He started his own business. Um, but after him, I've asked multiple homeless people. And question about him. Were you filming that interaction or was that just you going about your day? I, I believe I have it on film. Uh, I didn't film every interaction with him. But I definitely, it's, it's on my TikTok somewhere. I even met up with him probably five months ago because that's when we reconnected and he showed me, you know, he started his business and he showed me that he was doing well, which was awesome to, to hear. Um, cause just, when you, sorry, go sorry. Go go ahead, go ahead. so what prompted you to go to him? What, what, what was your, that was like a d divine intervention almost. You know? It just kind of happened at the moment in my head was like, why not offer this guy a job? He's standing here begging for money. Why not give him a job? Let him work for the money. Um, that's kind of what was going on through my head. Okay. And then how many people like did it take to approach after him before you found uh, the found, next person? Yeah. Or found an employee? I mean, I would say at least 20 people. Really? Yeah. So you approached that many people before anybody says yeah? Yeah. If I approach 10 people, I'd be lucky if I get one person. You know, over the past four years, honestly, though, I would say the past solid two and a half years, um, ever since the the first person that actually came aboard and worked with me, it's probably been maybe two years. So I've been approaching people and, you know, they all said, yeah, or whatever. Most of them said, yeah. And then I, I guess it goes back to them being scared. Not believing it, you know. I saw that like your most recent, like one of your most recent videos, you went up to somebody on the street and they said, you know, oh, I want to get off, but I'm not ready yet. Like I, yeah. I got a little bit more, you know, like punishment or whatever. Mm -hmm. What What do you think he meant by that? And is that an answer you get pretty often? Yeah, um, I mean, the power of addiction is insane. Once you're addicted, especially to the drugs nowadays, it's it's brutal. Your body needs it. You don't know. You're not in the right state of mind. Um, so all you need is that next fix. That's why they're out there getting money. You know, they're, they're better at panhandling, asking for money, than going to work sick as a dog. So um, addiction is a real, real bad struggle, and it's happening all across the world. So I, suffer from, I suffered from addiction. I'm coming up on 12 years clean. I think, Congratulations. Thank you. I think that's the reason why I like to help these people because I know what it's like, you know, not having what you need. You get sick, sick as a dog. And is that something you are, I mean, you are vocal about that, obviously. Yeah. But is that something that from day one you kind of use to empathize with them? And you're like, look, like, I'm not just some dude coming up to you. I've been in your shoes before. Yeah. I want to help you and, and look at what I'm doing now. That's right. I want to help you. Yeah, I, I do bring that up because it, you know, secures them, makes them feel better. Um, I mean, I, I'll i share anyone my life story. I went to prison. So I, I've kind of seen it all. I mean, I come from a great family. I was never homeless, but I can only imagine, you know. How do you end up, and this is going to be a little bit more like about our society, honestly, but like you talk about coming from a great family, mm -hmm. but then also experiencing life behind bars and addiction how does that happen and how does our society let that happen so i would say with me i let it happen i chose to do the wrong thing 
Uh, it was my decision. I screwed up. Um, I got caught selling drugs. I was doing them, selling them. And, I mean, I blame myself for it. I don't blame my family. I don't blame anyone else but myself. Um, and I'm just really happy that I, I came out of it mostly myself, you know. Which not a lot of... It, no, not a lot not, of people do. That's not, why yeah. I do what I do on a day-to-day basis to try and help them because people just need that helping hand. They need that support. It's hard to get it. It really is. When you were at your low, right? Mm-hmm. What was it that was going through your mind that was like, this is what I need to do to step one, get out of this and make a lot better life for myself? I think it was just facing jail time, you know, knowing that I was going to go to prison. In the beginning, I didn't think I was. I was out on bail for three years and I never thought I'd go to jail because I was doing good out on bail, but I really wasn't. Towards the end, I started selling drugs again, started doing them. I got caught again, and then that's when they just threw me in. And being in prison made me realize that you got to cherish life. You know, life life's beautiful. Um, yeah. Was this already once you were a business owner as well? This was afterwards or before? Because you kind of... Prison? To, uh, yeah. So um, I went to prison. So I started a business. While I was doing all, you know, doing the drugs. Then I started selling the drugs so that I can support my habit. And then that's when I got caught. Um, I, the business wasn't really anything back then. It was very small. Um, and then once I got caught, I started to, you know, amp it up more. And then I was kind of devastated when, when I had to go to prison. Because I got, I don't know, 10, 12 accounts. And I didn't know what to tell them. I just literally up and left. Some of them I said, I, I have to go away to help a family member out of state. And I, I kind of lost everything that I worked hard for. So that really, you know, powered me to to get out and start it again and be stronger. And how long did it take to you get out to, you know, building something back up that you're on your feet, you're you have the momentum going your way again? I did it pretty quick. I reached out to some of the customers that I worked with and they actually, some of them took me back. So within one year, I mean, I had my 12 accounts back and then from there I just, I kept growing basically doubled almost every year. Did you tell them what happened where you were? I would say maybe just a couple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what was the reaction or any like negative connotation from them? No. Like, like I don't want to hire you again or no. They're supportive. A lot of people are supportive, believe it or not. If you're open about your past, a lot of people will be supportive. You know, there's a lot of people that are scared to just talk about their past, but there's nothing wrong with it. We all make mistakes. No one's perfect, you know. So you talk about like doubling your business, you're scaling up, you're getting back on your feet. And then obviously, like we were talking about earlier, you approach, you starting to approach a couple of people. Mm -hmm. What was it that caught your eye about social media and like the influence that you could create on there or was it just you know something fun to do you know with your camera and your phone it was just something fun to do you know when i started there's no money to be made uh i never even thought about that uh i was just my first video was like my guys wrapping up a job and i just put like a funny song on or whatever and then from there it was just all about my guys you know i was giving my guys raises on camera so that i can inspire other bosses to be good. You know, if your employees are taking care of you, why not take care of them? I know there's a lot of good bosses out there. So as long as you take care of your employees, you're, you're going to have a great business. Obviously, you know, you're, ne- you're never going to please everybody, right? Mm-hmm. But you have a lot of comments on your TikToks. Like, yeah. oh, you know, these, you know, this guy bought his employees an iced coffee or a chicken parm for lunch. Yeah. And he's making a thousand bucks off this video. <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you have to say to those guys who think that, you know, you have more money than God from social media and you're giving pennies essentially back to your employees? Obviously, so, that's not the case. But. Yeah. Uh, people don't know, obviously, because it doesn't happen to them. They're, they're not out, out there on, you know, TikTok or whatever making content. Um, but the creator fund, if you had like a million views, you made maybe $8. It's like, what is that? 
for me to feed my guys at McDonald's, it cost 30, maybe 40 bucks. Um, so everything looks all great on, on camera. It looks like I'm making a ton of money, but you don't really know until you try it. Um, so they just assume. So for people that assume, you shouldn't assume and be negative about it. If you want to assume, just be positive. That's what I got to say to them. Have people uh, like reached out to you off of social media saying, hey, I'm an, I'm an addict. I need help. Like, can, yeah. can I get a job? Or, yeah. Really? T- tons of people. And it's sad because I cannot hire everyone. Um, you know, I did this not expecting it to blow up. Um, and the good thing is, though, people are getting clean just from watching my videos. They see what we're doing. They see that people are getting clean from my videos. So it's making or helping them get clean. You know, people will comment and say, hey, I got 10 days sober. You know, I got six months sober because of you. And, you know, that's that's real big. That's huge. So that makes me feel good. Um, now I do this just so that I can inspire other people to either do good, get clean, or just be happy. Mm. Yeah. And you had no idea that this would be possible to inspire those people when you started. Yeah, too. no idea. Yeah. I never thought I'd be where I am now. Um, I do put a lot of my hard, you know, earned money into what I do. I do make money on social media, but it's not what people think. Um, I literally put all of it back, if not more, into what I do. So, because it's it's an addiction for me. It's a high for me. I I love helping people. When you refresh and you see just like all the people, whether it's support, Mm -hmm. follows. I mean, it seems like for you, it's most of the time support because of the message that you're putting out right yeah it's mostly support there's going to be haters no matter what there's going to be haters we have haters Um, yeah (laughs) i can only imagine i mean there's i know there's haters watching right now you know um and all i can do is just smile i went through a good four months of bullshit people accusing me of stealing money not helping people because they just had the wrong facts and some of them were jealous um I know what I did. I know who I helped. I've saved lives and I'm still doing it. You know, what have they done? They've done nothing. So what was the first like moment that it did come to your mind that, wow, I am making an impact on social media. Like this is bigger than I thought it was, you know, at the beginning, maybe a viral video or something like that. Yeah. I'd say the first viral video of the, the first person I actually well, I should say we helped because it wasn't just myself. There was other people involved, you know, the scholarships and people giving out free dental work. Um, that was that was a crazy moment. There was a time where I was flying, you know, in the U.S. every other every other week, <laughs> really, to pe- to pick people up and bring yeah, them. pick people up. And my biggest thing was, you know, if I'm going to help you wherever you are, I'm going to come to you, bring you where you need to go, you know. And support you the whole way. Um, I've helped, you know, over 28 people um, with the help of other people, too. And most of them I still talk to. You know, we drifted apart for the most part. But we still we still stay in touch. Uh, It's hard. I mean, every day I'm, I'm busy and, you know, I try and help or be there for someone as much as I can. I'm only myself, you know. Of those 28 people, how many have worked for you or like still work for you? So that's the thing. Most of those people were, they just wanted to get clean and sober. Um, so I'd say maybe th- maybe three of them okay. helped, you know, worked for me. Um, at, at that era, that whatever, that time that we were helping people was simply just helping them get into treatment, um, supporting them with what they needed. I... I had people donate and, you know, raise GoFundMes. Um, is that where most of the money's coming from for the treatment is donations and GoFundMe? Yeah. So some, some scholarships, uh, which meaning free treatment. Um, and I've had, you know, donations come through. You know, that helps. It's, it's very expensive to help people. Very expensive. How much, like... How much is it to send somebody to a good rehab and make sure they come out clean? Or is it a pretty variable expense? I, I like when you say good rehab. 
because a lot of people say, you know, it's free to send someone to rehab. That's if you're sending them to state funded facilities, which can be great if you really put your mind to it. But overall, the care, the care is not that great. Um, so I would say it's if you had to put an average number, it's about a thousand dollars a day to help someone, you know, in treatment. And obviously, if they do 30 days, that's thirty thousand dollars. And then after 30 days, that money could just be wasted. You know, they could go right back into doing what they did. But I guess I don't consider it wasted. Regardless, they got something out of it. You know, maybe that time wasn't their time. Maybe next time they're going to they're gonna get it. If somebody does, you know, you, you spend $30,000 to get them into a rehab facility. And then, you know, they say, hey, Vic, you know, I promise you this is it. I'm going to be clean after this. Thank you. And then they go back a week later and they relapse. You know, obviously you can't be like angry at them. But Correct. What's the what's your emotion inside? Because you, you understand what it's like. But at the same time, you know, they lied to you. They they disappointed you. So I understand because I've been there. Okay. Um, I understand the power of addiction. I, I get upset when that happens, um, but I don't get angry at them. I don't. Just say, see you later. You know, for the most part, we just distance ourselves. You know, like I'm still here. Anyone that has relapsed from my program or, you know, anyone that I've helped, I'm still here. Um, I certainly can't, you know, if they come crawling back, I can't give them a free scholarship um, unless I raise money. My my nonprofit is, is very new and it's hard to raise money. It really is because people don't trust. A lot of nonprofits, they think that people are just stealing money. I've never paid myself. And it's crazy because I I put a lot of the people that I help, I put them before my family sometimes, you know. It's hard. But it's because I care. I know my family's good. They're okay. If I can help this person go through the struggle that they're going through, I'm going to help them. I'm going to do whatever it takes. Family as well, you got a big so. heart. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about that nonprofit and starting that and just the whole process and your thoughts. It was pretty that. easy. Um, I started it, you know, because of the first person that I've helped. I said, why not, you know, try and get people to, to donate, which was a great idea. You know, it turned out great. I had a great donor who helped a lot of people. But then, it, you know, it happened. Uh, people started accusing me. They didn't believe where the money went. So... People just said, he's stealing the money. So that's the, the whole thing that I went through. Um, I stood tall. I stayed quiet. Um, because I stayed quiet, people thought I was, you know, backing down from... The- yeah, backing down in that I, I did steal money. That's what, you know, was probably going through people's mind. But I just, I'm not going to go out there and just start fighting people on social media. I don't have the energy for that. I'd rather help someone, you know. So that went down and it's over with now. You know, I got through it. I still smile. I look back and it was just stupid. But I know that I'm helping people and I'm saving their lives. I've saved um I've saved a pregnant girl's life. She had her child after she got clean and sober. They're healthy as shit right now. So that really makes me smile. You know, that baby wouldn't have been here if, if she didn't get clean. She may have not been here. Um, just a bunch of people with families. And, and most of these people were, were out of state. You know, it's cool. I've never even known them. Social media has brought us together and we're friends now. We may not talk every day, but we're still friends. What does the future of like growing that nonprofit, obviously, like yeah. and, and building and putting more resources and, and more people and a, and a bigger movement behind this. What does that look like? So I, I, I really see this someday to be massive. Um, my biggest thing is I can't, I have a hard time trusting people. I've gotten burned a lot and it's just, it's hard for me to trust someone. Um, so when I find those people, then I'll, you know, slowly just keep growing this. But for now, I'm going to keep doing what I do and as long as I save one person, which I have saved more than one, I'm happy. But now I guess my addiction is just to keep saving people. Save more. It's not a bad addiction. Yeah. No. That's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's good that you're doing so much like 
inherent good, I mm-hmm. guess you want to say it, because, you know, like, you know, us, like, you know, we, we wake up every day, we do our work, you know, make mm-hmm. a couple bucks, and you go to bed, and it's like, did I really, you know, do enough? That's did I right. do, do enough today? Mm-hmm. But, like, when you know that you're changing people's lives and you're saving lives, that must be such, like, a great feeling of accomplishment, mm-hmm. like, knowing you did enough that day. Yeah, it is. And when I go to bed, I'm thinking about who am I going to help tomorrow? Uh, is this person that I currently helped, are they going to be okay? Like, my mind constantly spins. Um, and I always put myself last, which I got to kind of focus on, you know, taking care of myself too. Oh, that's important. I let my yeah. business down a little bit because of helping people. It really took a toll on me. Especially right now, the winter sucks. You know, I, I don't have much work, so I've been struggling. I feel like a lot of people struggle and, and they don't talk about it or, you know, people don't know because they don't talk about it. But I struggle. There's a lot of times where I struggle. Do you want to get into that at all? Like just in terms of like specifics on how you've like, obviously from the outside looking in, it seems great because you're helping all these people. But like you said, that has actually made a negative impact on your business and it's yeah. not going to prevent you from, from helping more people. But that's just right. like some of the things that you've learned from that experience right there. Yeah, um, helping all these people, it just, it took a lot out of me. Um, It's more than a full-time job. So doing all that, having my full-time company, you know, I I just started to forget about a lot of stuff. And I'm an unorganized person. So if I had to say one thing to someone that has their own business, be as organized as you can. Because there's times where I didn't even think about the payroll. I just let the guys work. And I might have brought ten thousand dollars in for that job, and I paid out twelve. I didn't make any money. Um, that that's a real big thing about just being organized, and it happens to a lot of people. So I've taken the time to try and be as organized as I can. Uh, you learn from your mistakes, and you know if you fail or or you fuck up, you just gotta find a way to to do it again the, the right way. You know, just just keep trying. I don't give up. That's one thing about me. I don't give up. Yeah. No, no matter how much I go through or how much stress I deal with. You know, some pe- The people that know me, they, they say, I don't know how you do it. And I don't. I don't know how I do it. I really don't. I just, I go. Just keep going. That's it. I'm like the Energizer Bunny. Getting your nickel up. Yeah, that's right. Getting your nickel up. Talk about like that, because you kept, you keep bringing this up, the addiction of helping people. Mm-hmm. Uh for you as someone that has dealt with the negative addictions before, right? With substance or whatever. Now having this, like, does it, does it really feel like a, like a similar thing where you get the rush from, yeah. From helping someone. Definitely. Can you describe that that feeling a little bit? Um, it's, it's hard to, it just makes me feel so good inside knowing that, you know, I gave that person an extra day to live, you know, because when you're in addiction, you could die any day, any second. I mean, I guess it sounds kind of weird because anyone can die any day, any second. But the chances of you, you know, surviving in addiction, it's it's very low. Um, So. It's I don't know, it's just a great feeling. It makes me feel great inside. I, I can't even explain how I really can't. I just know that I helped that person and that's it. I just feel great. And for you to get more of that feeling is just it's just helping more people. Just right? keep helping more people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know how or why. My mother is you know, she'd do anything for anyone. She's a sweetheart and maybe I get it from her. Like I would literally do anything for anyone. If if I'm dead broke and I got like a hundred bucks and someone needed it, a friend of mine or a family member, I'm gonna give it to them and I'm gonna be broke. Do you, are you a karma guy? Do you believe in, in that 100%, stuff? 100%, real big, yeah. Did that take a while for you to learn, or was that always? No, always. always. I believe you do something good, you're going to get something good in return. I, I guess I shouldn't say always. I mean, something as little as, like, littering out the window. When I was younger, I would litter. I didn't give a shit. But, you know, over time, I guess when I grew up, you know, you, you've got to grow up sometime in life. And that's one thing I will not litter out the window, you know, because I just, I believe in karma. Something so little like that. I don't like to lie. I just like to, you know, tell the truth, say it like it is. 
and just be a humble person. We can. I think we can see that. It's very, you know, you've we've talked about some like tough, difficult topics today, mm-hmm. and you've given us a very like clear view into everything. Um, yeah. I have one more question though. So, like, mm-hmm. what's it? You said you've helped twenty eight people. A few of them, you know, work with you full time still. Like, what's it? Is it like an advantage now that you have like almost a like a network of people that you know are your testimonials that they say you know Vic's the real deal. You know, yeah. come with us. Like, he's gonna help you. Do you think that it it helps that you have another layer below you now? Kind I of do. Advocating for you. I do because I'm actually gonna be taking someone tomorrow to Florida. Um, that is a friend of Troy. I don't know if you guys know Troy, but he's okay. the most I've recent guy that I helped. I've seen him in your videos. And because of him, he reached out and he wants treatment. So we got lucky enough to get him a scholarship at CBH in Florida. And um, he's going to be the next one. And because of the people I helped, it just really helped him feel safe about it. Yeah. Is that a very common, or just like something that, Lately, safety. it's been common. And you know? it's, it's like safety and assurance. Yeah. And the people that I've helped that are out of state, that, you know, we don't talk all the time, they know me. They know the, the true me, you know. Everyone's got their own opinion, you know, on me. But they know that I'm I'm here for them, you know. I'm I'm a great person to them. Um, and I still care about them. It's just, it comes a time where, like, you help so many people, you do so much, you can't just be there every second for someone. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. What do you have to say? Because, like, our audience is a lot of young entrepreneurs, young hustlers, people that, like like Jack was saying, like, might be focused on building something for ourselves, but the importance of helping others is, is still there. And, like, for someone, if you're focused on building a business or whatever, how do you... Or, or what's something that you could do to make an impact, um, whether it's, you know, help what you're building or help just like with the people around you? If you can help your community, um, there there's a bunch of nonprofits around. Find one that you like and just do something good for them. Help them hands on or if you can write a check to them. Um, help the community so that, you know, I guess more people can get jobs and off the streets I'm just really focused on people in addiction and getting people work. Uh, and if I can't hire someone, I'll be honest with them. I'll say, hey, you know, right now I can't hire you, but let me try and get you a job. So there was one girl that I recently helped maybe like four or five months ago. I went to the gas station to try and help her get a job. I spoke to the manager, showed them what I do. Um, and that helped her get in the door. She didn't end up getting the job. But I'll still, you know, go out of my way to help them get a job. Um, but yeah, anyone out there that's trying to build their business or trying to do good, just find out what you like. Find someone in the area that's doing what you like and just help them out. And, and like, especially young people, is there like ways to continue this into like younger generations? Like that you would, uh, that someone that's let's say in their teens or 20 early 20s could could take is just like knowledge and uh put into into their work yeah i would say i mean to all the young kids out there um just watch out i guess for your friends and if you see someone doing something stupid let's say you don't do drugs or you don't get high and you see them doing something stupid just talk to them just show them that Show them the world right now because the world today is is crazy. The drugs are stupid. It's not even worth it, you know? Um, You got to just cherish your life because you have one life. You know, make the best of it. Help as many people as you can without hurting yourself. That's great. If that makes sense. No, it (laughs) does. I think that does. Yeah, the world is a fucking... It's a disaster right now. It's crazy. Fucked up world we live in. Help as many people as you can. And to you, are there so are you are there any, maybe not clear because it's hard to sit, find a clear path, but like any steps that government or just society could be taking to to eliminate some of these problems easily. Yeah, the government can wake up, um, and see the world right now because the world is so shitty. Mm-hmm. There's so much more that they could be focusing on. 
but they're focusing on stupid shit. Um, you can you can get in in depth if you'd like. Yeah, to. please do. Honestly. Yeah, I'm not really like a political guy, but it's like, why not? You know, make the world a better place. There's other countries that are better than ours. Um, like my fiance, she's real big on like holistic and and all the food stuff, and I don't really look into it like she does. She'll show me like a box of cereal or whatever, and it says like, um. Not processed, I forget. Bioengineered food. Like the stuff that we're eating here is so bad. Because if you look from a factory. Yeah. yeah. And if you look at other countries, they ban the food that we still eat. It's like the government doesn't care about us, is what I think. Um so I don't really let it bother me. I just keep doing my thing to try and better myself. I don't worry about you know, what the government's trying to do. I try and, I guess, clean it up on my own. That's why I, I help the homeless. You know, I'll feed them too. Um, I'll just talk to them and just try and help them. You know, I'm trying to build as many resources as I can. It's funny because I was on the news once from the first person that I helped. And they don't want to see that shit. They don't want to, they don't want to show that on the news. So... They only want to show negative. That's it. That gets yeah. people worried. That's all they want to yeah. show. I reached out to like a couple of local news people that, that I knew and told them about what I was doing. And it's like, yeah, I'll get back to you. I'll let you know. It's like, really, dude? Like, this is a great thing. This will inspire other people because a lot of people drive around. They look at these homeless people as ship bags. And all it is is either the doctor prescribed them with the pill that they couldn't get off. Um... Or they just made a bad decision. So they're not bad people. Yeah, there are some bad people that are on the streets, but the majority of them are good people. They're just stuck. They're just in a fucked up place. I could swear, right? No, yeah. yeah, yeah. (laughs) How how do you change that perception Like when you look at a homeless person? I just look at them like they're a normal person that's just going through some shit. Mental health is a real big factor in homelessness, addiction. It hasn't really been looked at, you know, in in the past, but I think that it should be looked at more. Mental health is is huge to to anyone. You know, I'm starting to realize it myself. I started going to the gym, and that makes me feel good. Like I said, I stress out a lot. I just don't show it. You know, some days I may show it in my face. I just look run down and tired, but it's because I am. Um. Sometimes you can't even show it. I mean, you have so many people relying on you. Yeah. You know, your your family, your mm-hmm. employees, the people that you're helping, just, you know, your millions of followers on social yeah. media. And like, you're not allowed to say that you're stressed because then that stresses out other people too. Yeah, so I it's think... A, it's tough when you have to bottle it up. Yeah, I think that was a big thing for me is just trying to show everyone that I'm good, everything's great. But it's like now I'm at the point where life is not always great, so... I want to, you know, express that to the world and let people know that there's no one in this world that has life by the balls. You know, there might be someone out there that's got millions and billions of dollars. Yeah, that helps them, but they're dealing with their own shit. Look at these people killing themselves, you know, that have a great life. Like, why'd they kill themselves? They're a movie star. You know, why did he do it? You never know what someone's going through, whether they're rich, poor, homeless, addicted, or whatever. You never know what someone's going through. For you, what's going to be your moment? I made it my life mission and you know, you you'll, you'll feel co- complete when you accomplish whatever. Is is there something some kind of goal in mind? The only goal in mind is, is building my nonprofit, you know, taking people off the streets to a massive big, you know, big thing. Kind of like Make a wish. You know, I've done some stuff for them. They're a great nonprofit and um, they're massive. I went to an event not too long ago where they granted a, a girl a wish and it was, it was amazing. You walk in there, they had a whole bunch of stars hanging from the ceiling for every kid they granted a wish. And I think, I could be wrong, but I think in Massachusetts alone, they granted like 10,000 wishes. Like, that's insane. 
That's awesome. So I hope to be someday to help 10,000 people get off the streets. That's, I don't think I'll ever feel like fulfilled because there's so many people that need help in the world. That's what everybody says. We all, we go, we have a few questions. We ask everybody. We always kind of ask them what's your, we made it point. I don't think we've ever really had anybody that will ever be like satisfied with their success. Yeah. Because there's a lot that can be done to this world. Everyone needs to just kind of stand up and wake up. Um, yes, sir. The government's trying to trying to run us, and I don't I don't let that happen to me. I I go about my day. I don't let it bring me down. You will never find me talk a lot about the government. You know, I just brought it up quick here, but I don't let it bring me down. That's the right way to go about yeah. it. Yeah. Because in reality, what can you change about? You can't the do nothing. You can't do. You're gonna walk in the state house and be like, "Fuck this! I'm not doing that." They're going to say, fuck you. That's you know? time that you could be spending doing something that's that right. can actually make Just an impact. Just continue yeah. to do good, and yeah. the world will be a great place, I hope, one day. That's if everyone wakes up. And, we and, can hope. Yeah. yeah. We can hope. Everyone's got to get together and just, just do good things. Um, even something simple as, like, when, you, when you're driving down the road and you see a homeless guy on the side, just roll your window down and say, hey, how is your day going? I know some of them are out there swinging their arms, eyes closed. You know, you can't really do anything about that. Because they're really fucked up and they're going through a really bad trip, you know, high as shit. But the ones that are, I guess, coherent, just say hi to them. You never know. You could touch someone just by saying hi. So. Is that your best advice if, like, we're walking down, you know, like Mass Ave in Boston or walking by South Station mm -hmm. and we see, um, you know, a handful of homeless people on the sidewalk? Yeah. Like, you know, I always, um, like, do you try to say hi to them or? Yeah. Okay. That's that's what I would say. Just ask them how, how their day is. Um, you'll be surprised. Some of them will, will want to talk to you and, and give their life story. You know, some people just have a simple fuck up and that's why they're there. Um, and then they get used to it. That's why they stay there. But then there's the others that are addicted to drugs and they have no other choice. Um, and when you're on drugs, you don't, you do some messed up shit. You know, you... You betray your family members, you steal from them, and then your family members kick you out and they say the hell with you. But it's really the drugs that's that's doing it to them. People that have never done drugs, you don't know. That's why you judge people and you say, oh, look at those fucking junkies. It's crazy. It really is. On a lighter note, just I guess before we get out of here, you said you've been getting into the gym. So have we. Good. What have you uh what have you been doing? Just lifting or are you doing anything else? I'm doing lifting and, you know, running on the treadmill, trying to do cardio. Uh-huh. Cuz I got to lose, you know, some pounds. Got to get rid of this gut for the summer. Yeah. <laughs> Each pod. I just honestly I want to feel good. Um if you're overweight, you don't feel good. It's the truth. Uh and and that's the other thing too, like I guess I can go on and on here, but there's a food addiction, you know? People eat there's a gambling. There's so many addictions out there. Um, that's why, like this shirt here, my best friend came up with it. Addicted to recovery. Um, on the back, it says one day at a time. There are so many addictions out there that you know you can get recovery from. You just gotta you gotta want it. That's the biggest thing. You have to want it. It's a great way to put it. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people struggle. Oh, cool. Victor, Amazing. thank you for. I think. I'm good at least. Yeah, I think that was great. Unless you have anything more to add, but no, I think that was a really good conversation. I think anyone listening to this will get a lot out of it. Yeah. Um, and your story is obviously inspiring and also just fascinating on, on how you're driven to, to continue doing this. So thank you so much for coming. Yeah. In. No, I appreciate time. it. The only thing I got to say to close it out is you're not alone. If you struggle, if you're having a bad day or whatever, reach out for help. You'd be surprised at the people that will help you. So definitely reach out. Um, and if you want to just reach out to me, you can send a submission form. Uh, just go to help at victorthegoodboss.com. Um, you can go to my bio. You'll see all my links. I have GoFundMes and we'll all kinds of stuff. We'll link everything in the YouTube. Yeah, yeah. We'll link it all for you so yeah. our followers can see that as well. Awesome. But um, just text that to us and we'll figure it yeah, out. Yeah, I will. But... Um, Victor, thank you very much. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, no, it was great. Thank you. Awesome. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys.